Good morning. Today uh, we look at Zechariah chapters 9 through 12. And, and it, you know, I put the title on there, December 29th, 2022. It's just, you know, just two more days of this year and two more days of, uh, and we will have completed talking about the Old Testament. And on January 1st, well, on January 2nd, we'll start looking at New Testament. January 1st is a Sunday that way. But in in these last, well, I shouldn't say the last ver chapters of Zechariah, but in these four chapters of Zechariah, we find some good news for the people of Jerusalem, the, the Israelites, the land of Jerusalem and the land of Judah and God's people. And, and it, you know, Chapter 9 in my Bible is a big headline, an oracle, you know. Um, and it says, you know, the word of the Lord is against the land of Hadrash. And, and so this is the hand of the Lord is, is coming against all of these lands and other nations that have been um, warring against Israel. And, you know, God is upset with them. But, you know, through all of this as well, God has been using these other countries to to show the Israelites his displeasure with them, you know, and it's because of Israel Israel's sin that that God, you know, according to what we read, is kind of allowing these other nations to have um, success against the people of Israel. But these other places are are going to be stripped of of their powers, of their intentions, of and uh, uh, and. Verse nine is is a verse that we we refer used to refer to Jesus. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Yo, lo, your King comes to you, triumphant and victorious, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And you know this is right out of the the story of of Jesus on you know uh, in the Passion story. You know the, what we read. You know, the week before Easter, there, you know, just as Jesus is the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, just days before he is arrested, tried, and crucified, that, you know, the king comes, he says, triumphant, victorious, humble. And this is one of the things that, I mean, we may, we may see leaders today that are triumphant or and victorious, but, but humble. Humility is, is a totally different characteristic that we don't see in, in a, lot of, a lot of people. But this this is a part of the the scriptures that we read in the New Testament Gospels, you know, uh, on that Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, you know, that long story that that leads to the to the arrest of, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the rest kind of goes on, and it's talking about Israel's restoration, about the the, the freedom uh, that comes, the forgiveness that comes. Verse 11, As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold. I mean, so this is the the, the Israelite people who have been scattered around are will be returning to Jerusalem, to, to their to their stronghold, to their temple that is there. And, you know, today I declare I will restore you double, it says in verse 12. For I have bent Judah as my bow, and I met Ephraim its arrow. And, you know, so God has in many ways broken the spirit of these Israelites, broken their pride, and brought them to their knees upon their realization of their need for God. And, and um, you know, so it's that, it's that promise that way. And the promise of this coming ruler, and that was your, below your king comes triumphant and victorious and humble, riding on this donkey. So it's the, the coming of the, of the king, the coming of the savior, the, the return of, of power, and I shouldn't say power, the, the return of family connections, the return of the Israelite people being united again under God. In chapter 10, verse 3, my anger is hot against the shepherds. I will punish the leaders. I mean, so here's still the example of the, you know, the kings and, and false prophets that were leading people astray. And, 
and, and God is saying, you know, those people have more responsibility. And and it's, uh, I like the quote that was from Spider-Man, with great responsibility comes great, um, no, I forgot it, great responsibility. You know, with, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. And this is one of the things that so many leaders forget, you know, their responsibility part. God says in verse 6 of chapter 10, I will strengthen the house of Judah. I will save the house of jo Jodah, Joseph. I will bring them back. Why? Because I have compassion on them. And this is, you know, this is one of the best things we can think about, our God. That he has compassion on us. He knows our weakness. He knows our failings. And he has compassion. He understands and, and has that grace therefore to be able to forgive and to welcome them. And, and, and then the end of verse seven, the children shall see it, see it and rejoice. Their hearts will exalt the Lord. They will see this love and grace that comes through God. And then in uh, chapter 11 continues to talk about the, the restoration of, of Judah, of Israel, of Jerusalem. Um, you know, and it's, you know, it, whether it's just, I mean, the Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, but the, the unification is is what's so important. But on, in verse seven, it says, you know, on behalf of the sheep, I became the shepherd. I took two staffs, and this version says, I named one favor and the other unity. Some will say favor and union. Some say uh, beauty and bond. And, uh, you know, these two staffs of of God, of the leader, you know, and it goes on. And in verse 10, I took my staff of favor and broke it, annulling the covenant I had made with my people. So this is, this is that reminder of the people's unfaithfulness of, of you know, the government, gov covenant that God had made. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. And the people forgot it so much that, that God is saying that, you know, you know, this, this covenant of, of favor, in here is broken the covenant is is annulled and then and down in in verse 14 it says i took my second staff of unity and annulled the family ties between judah and israel and, and so maybe this is still talking about that northern southern kingdom and the division that is there the the, the unity or you know in and it's the new, new King James Version that uses the words beauty and bond. And you know, so the bond, the unity, the same, same meaning, just different words that way. But the, there will be, you know, it'll be separated. But yet, within all of it, it talks about restoration. And in chapter 12, it talks a lot about Jerusalem's strength and victory. It's, it starts out signing, signing, I mean, when I first started reading through chapter 12 again, I thought, well, this sounds like devastation again, but it's, it's that remembrance. You know, verse two, I am about to make Jerusalem a cup of reeling for all of the surrounding people. It will be against Judah. And on that day, I'll make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all peoples who lift it. But, I think it's rather than talking so much about making Jerusalem and Judah this heavyweight for the Israelites, it's for the other nations because this is the restoration, the, 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 the promise of compassion, of forgiveness, of grace, of freedom, of coming back together again. And in verse 10 of chapter 12, I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that when they look upon the one whom they have pierced, they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only child. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, uh, verse 30, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. In verse 31, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that in believing you will have life in his name. So this Jesus is the one who is pierced. You know, is, you know he, he wasn't killed in battle. He wasn't pierced with a sword that killed him. But after he had died upon the cross, the sword or the spear pierced his side. 
And so there's, there's that image, that reference. There's also, you know, there's discrepancy about that, you know, as to what this piercing means as it's, uh, you know, other, other people. But, but when you're talking about the restoration, about the reunification of the people of Israel and coming together of God's people, it is through the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that God, God was intending that this would all happen. But yet we know that, you know, many people didn't, didn't look upon Jesus. But another thing in verse, uh, as you continue reading through verse 10, they have pierced, they call him, and they mourn as one for an only child. And that makes me think of, you know, John three sixteen. for God sent his only begotten son. You know, this, Jesus is, I mean, this is what Jesus calls himself as of God, you know, the only child. And they weep bitterly over him as one weeps for a firstborn. And so God is using again this, this image of salvation that comes through the Messiah. And, uh, and I don't know, maybe, maybe sometimes since we know of Jesus and his death and his resurrection, um, you know, maybe I read a little too much into some of these things, but I see, I see so much in the Old Testament that continues to point us to Jesus. And, and this is what God would have for each and every one to know and to believe in Jesus as, as Lord and Savior.